into the affairs of men so that we can change the world and bring about a better world. We thank you, Father, for giving us the equipment and the ability to be able to articulate your truth to people who don't know it and don't understand it. I ask even today, Father, that you make the clarity of the message clear. Cause yes, there to be understanding, cause yes. there to be revelation, but most of all, Father, cause in us a doing and a longing to please you and to do your will. Yes. With all our might and with all our strength, that we give you worship, praise, and adoration, so be it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father's good, isn't it? Yes, it is. They said it's hot in here, but there is a place that's hotter than this. See, uh, 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 right now we can be quenched a little bit okay. from the heat, right? Yeah. Is it, I don't know what it's about, 90, 93 outside, 97, I don't know. But it's hot outside. This ain't Chicago type of weather, is it? We used to 75, right? right. And, and, and the Windy City, we right. used to the nice breeze blowing, right? right? But we ain't got no breeze blowing and no 75 today. So uh, we just thank the Father for allowing us an opportunity uh, just to gather as sons and daughters and to just be obedient and cause us to walk in truth and walk in love. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And today we're going to deal with uh, this whole uh, aspect of Overcoming rejection. Overcome. Everybody say overcoming rejection. Overcoming rejection. And, and it's something about uh, of the enemy. A lot of times when we try to come uh, into the house of Yah, come and gather among the saints and, and, and gather our hearts and our minds. How many people know that the devil don't want us to fellowship? Yeah. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't want us to, to gather ourselves together. But how many people know that the devil is a liar? Y'all know what I'm saying. Say the devil is a liar. See, Yahweh always frustrates the works of the enemy. You know, the, the enemy comes against the true children of Yah, and uh, people don't really understand and know that they could be tools that the devil can use. Because Satan is in people. Are y'all hearing that? Yes. And people can smile it in your face. People can laugh and joke with you. Uh, and then at the same time, they can stab you right in the back, can't they? Yes. Hallelujah. But as we begin to walk in truth and walk in the anointing and in the power of Yah, we bind the devil and we speak and declare that all of his works will be frustrated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua, we frustrate all his works yes. and cause all his works to be frustrated. And we return every evil word, every evil thought, everything that was done evil to us. We say return it back to the sinner, the sender, a thousand times over. Hallelujah. 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 I thought y'all, didn't, didn't David pray for his enemies like that? Yeah. <laughs> I think David said, break the teeth of my enemies. Yeah. Didn't he say that? So, so there's been words and there's been deeds done uh, to us that was not like the most high. So we ask for all of those deeds and all those words to be returned back to the sender a thousand yes. times over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that I'm connected with some of the saints that live on Mount Carmel. Are y'all you. hearing that? Yeah. Right, See, man. Mount Carmel was the place where it was, it was uh, Elijah the prophet yes. against the prophets of Baal. Whoa. And, and, and uh, he said, come on out to Mount Carmel. And we're going to have a duel. We're going to have a fight. We're going to see who is Yah right. really hearing. Yeah. Are y'all hearing that? Right. And, and, and uh, I was there. I was there on that mountain. And I understand that uh, he, he allowed the 400 prophets of Baal, they were coming up against one Elijah. Right. But guess who prevailed at the All end? Right. They started praying and cutting themselves, and no fire came down yeah. to uh, uh, on their sacrifice. But Elijah took his offering and poured water and water over it, and he called on the Most High Yah, yes. and the Most High Yah answered by fire. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. Right in the midst of people who were doubters, right in the midst of people who were spectators, right in the midst of people that didn't want to see the will of Yah being worked in uh, the life of the people. But nevertheless, Elijah 
uh, called on the name of the Most High Yah, yeah. and the Most High Yah answered by fire. Yeah. So, so, so today we're going to see who the Most High Yah is going to truly hear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we ask for the Father to return every evil thing and every evil work to yes. return back to the cinders yeah. a thousand times over. Yes. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Hallelujah. So, so, so today, we're going to, I, I guess I feel like stirring up the enemy. Stir him up. Stir him up. Hallelujah. Uh, today, we're going to deal with overcoming rejection. Overcoming rejection. And today, we're going to learn that rejection starts off as rejection. And it ends up becoming the spirit of rejection. Yes. And the spirit of rejection leads us to self-rejection. Mm -hmm. And then it brings along with it three other friends. We're going to talk about that today. But today, we want the main thing we want you to know is that you can overcome rejection. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I can overcome. I can overcome. Rejection. rejection. Say, we can overcome. We can overcome. As Israelites. As Israelites. Rejection. Rejection. It, 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 listen, you automatically know and understand that the most rejected people or the person and the people in the world have been the Israelites. Yes. But, but even though they have been the most rejected people, at the same time, everybody want to be there. <laughs> and one of the most rejected uh, uh, people in the world is the Messiah. He was the most rejected person in the world. And uh, matter of fact, in John chapter 1, verse 1 and 1, he's going to tell you how he was rejected. What did it say? He came time. unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. Y'all yeah. okay. think that's rejection? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. You know it's rejection. That's rejection, ain't it? Yeah. You come unto your own. Turn off all the other mics and just keep that one on on. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Come on. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So as many as received him and did not reject him, to them, to them, everybody say to them. To them. He gave power to become the sons and daughters of Yah. Yeah. The ones that won't reject him. Yes. Are y'all hearing it? Yes. Come on. Even to them that believe on his name. Even to them that believe on his name. That's a, that's a big piece there. Yes, the definition of rejection is a sense of being unwanted. The sense of being unwanted. And everybody in here at one time or another has dealt with rejection or has dealt with the spirit of rejection or has dealt with being rejected by other people. Say it, Pastor. Everybody in here, at one time yes. or another, yes. Yes. at one time or another, has yes. dealt with this whole rejection piece. Y'all hear that? Yes. Yes. Right. Rejection, again, is the sense of being what? Unwanted. It's the agony of desperately wanting people to love you, but being convinced they do not. Yeah. They actually may be loving and accepting, but when you are suffering rejection, you are unable to believe or receive that anybody truly loves right. you. Yeah, that's true. Y'all hearing it? Yes. Rejection works subtle, or subtle, to destroy your self-esteem and to destroy your purpose. Rejection. Rejection. It's designed to destroy your self-esteem. It's designed to destroy your worth. Mm -hmm. Rejection causes you to feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rejection spurs you to reject other people, and before they have an opportunity to reject you, mm -hmm. you already reject them because you feel like that's about to come on, like they're about to reject you, so therefore you reject them. 
Rejection wants you to base your worth on what you do instead of who you are in Yeshua HaMashiach. That's what rejection wants you to do. It wants you to base your worth based on what you do and not based on who you are in Yahshua. Y'all hearing this? Yes. So what do you do? You go around trying to please everybody mm -hmm. so that they won't reject yes. you. Or you go and try to reject them before they get an opportunity right. to reject you because you've been dealing with this spirit of being rejected right. for so long. Children in foster care. People in the prison systems. People in homeless. Been thrown away. Yes. All their life dealing with rejection. People in your home dealing with rejection or being rejected or these feelings of rejection. Remember I talked about in your soul, your soul houses three things. It houses your thinking. It houses the way you feel. And it houses your choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. So your mind can be affected, and your mind and the thoughts that come in your in your in your, your mind, you thinking certain things, thinking thoughts of rejection, is gonna ultimately affect your feeling. Because you're gonna believe what you feel. Yes. Even though the thoughts in your mind don't even originate with you, you believe. What's in your mind? You, you're thinking it, so and you're feeling it, you're feeling a certain way, so I guess it gotta be true. Yeah. And all of that's gonna ultimately affect your choice and decisions. Mm -hmm. Your thinking, your feeling, mm -hmm. and your choosing is the soulish realm. And that's why the book tells us to work out our own soul salvation. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to work out what we allow to go in our mind. We have to allow ourselves uh, uh, and work out how we feel about what we're thinking about. And we ultimately have to uh, work out the choices and the decisions. Because I'm here to let you know, every feeling you feel don't mean that it's true. That's it. right. That's right. That's right. The book never said that your feelings is the truth. Right. So whether you're feeling overwhelmed, whether you're feeling unloved, undeserving, unworthy, your feelings is not the truth. That's why Yeshua said you shall know the truth and it will set you free. Your feelings come and go. Your feelings are up and down. One day you feel good and the next day you feel bad. But just because you feel good or bad don't mean that that's the truth. Y'all hearing that? Hallelujah. Since you're going to know the truth. Well, what is the truth? Thy word is the truth. Hallelujah. Thy law is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Y'all hearing that? So your feelings and your emotions are not the truth. Y'all was worried. Some people, because of rejection, they become withdrawn. Others implode with anger and hatred and fighting and bitterly against the pain and the feelings of injustice. Mm -hmm. Have y'all known somebody dealing with the spirit of rejection and they're so angry or they're so withdrawn. You've been trying to get them out the room and come on and participate, but they so feel and believe that they are they are not worthy of anything. They can't come around. They, 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 have, they, they have these feelings on the inside. Yeah. And these feelings begin to dictate what they do. Yes. They have feelings of hatred. Mm -hmm. Feelings of anger. Because of what has happened in their life. In regards to rejection. Yeah. So they start fighting. And they have all of these feelings of pain on the inside of them and it's causing them, us to know and to pick up on the signs that these people are feeling rejected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, see you, you got to understand and know that even leaders and preachers and teachers and apostles and prophets, all, they deal with rejection. All right, speak it fast. I, I know hear that. Yes. Being rejected, being rejected. Mm -hmm. And because they are rejected, they begin to uh, uh, put 
rejection or, or, or try to put that on you like you rejected him and you ain't rejected him at all. You ain't did that to him. No. Y'all hearing that? Yes. We're dealing with somebody right now that's dealing with a spirit of rejection. Yes. Right now. Yes. A leader. Yes. That's a pastor of a church. Mm. But he suffers with the spirit of rejection. Mm. So he automatically thinks he's we rejected him, but we ain't rejected him at all. Mm. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54 and 6, what did it say? The Lord had called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in the spirit, and a wife of youth when thou wast refused. By God. So, so the father's telling us that Yahweh has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou was refused. Said, so, so the father's already talking about this. It's a, a spirit on these people that's causing them to feel a certain way. They feel grieved, they feel forsaken. Y'all see that? Yeah. Come on, what it say? For a small moment. No, For a small moment. See, you can feel when the Father's presence ain't with you no more. Yes, yeah. Can't you? Yes. Especially when you're in sin and transgression and, 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 and iniquity. Even Yeshua himself, when he was on the tree, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my Yah, my Yah, why hast thou what? Forsaken me. Yes. He said, For a small moment have I forsaken thee. Come on. But with great mercies will I gather you. But with great mercy, I'm going to gather you. So it may seem like you're left alone, but you're really not alone at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejection is common in people who are demonized. The spirit of rejection is common in people who are full of the devil, full of demonic spirits. Rejection, this is because rejection is a wound that usually begins early in life and a wound left untreated begins to develop into an infection. So we got to deal with some of the wounds that we have received in this life. And if you are honest, how many people have, have still are carrying some of those wounds from the past? Yeah. Y'all don't know and realize how many people call me because they get church hurt. Mm -hmm. Somebody in church hurt they feelings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because somebody in church hurt they feelings, they don't want to have nothing to do with nobody that's, that's talking about church whatsoever at all. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about church. We, we, we say that we the people of the book. Right. Hallelujah. 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 We, ain't coming, we ain't coming from that perspective and understanding. Right. Right. But sometimes you have to go through all of that just to bring people out of that first mm -hmm. so they can actually hear what you're saying. Right. Yes. Because some of our people are the most rejected people mm -hmm. there is. And they're dealing with wounds and hurts. Mm -hmm. And when they open up their mouth, you can tell that they've been infected by something. Something is, is really bothering them. Something has really went on. Something has really happened to them that has caused them to begin to speak like they're speaking. Out of the abundance of the heart. Come on. The mouth speaks. See, one thing you can't. See, you can deceive us by pretending. You can deceive us by smiling. Coming to, to the assembly with a smile on your face. But one thing you can't deceive is when you start opening up your mouth. Because what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. So these wounds start early in life. Sexual abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Having a, 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 a father or a mother put, betray you, yeah. put you away. Mm -hmm. Do something physically to you that they shouldn't do. Abuse you, abuse. Y'all yes. hearing it? Yes. These things start early in life. If you're the youngest, then you got your older brothers and sisters to deal with. They're rejecting you. Because now mama's making them do something. Go get the pamper. Go throw something in the guy. I don't hear this. Yes. Now there's another young brother got to feed him now. We got to do something for them now. Spirit of rejection. All right? They begin early in life, and a wound left untreated develops into an infection, 
And demons are like germs that are attracted to a wound and causing an infection. See, devils and demons ain't stupid. <laughs> they know when you've been hurt and when you, you know, what's going on in your life. They understand. Yeah. And they're attracted to the pain of what you've been through in your life. And if you have never dealt with that honestly and openly and gotten some help and some deliverance from rejection, you're already opening up yourself for demonic spirits to come on in and continue to have that wound stay open and never be healed. Y'all hear me now? Yes, Pastor. Children who grow up without fathers also lack identity. Yes. They lack identity. And this results in a frantic, lifelong search for a father. Y'all don't know how many people I got, friends of mine, in their 40s, in their 50s, never grew up with a dad, and they're still looking for a dad. Yeah. They're still looking for some kind of validation. They're looking for some type of an approval of a father. Yeah. Many of them are sitting in assemblies all over this world. They're sitting there because their father left and they're sitting under ministries of men who are doing them just flat out wrong. Ain't being a good example whatsoever at all. But because they know that they have been rejected, the preacher and the leader, whoever it is, plays on that. Y'all hearing that? Instead of getting that brother, that sister healed and delivered, they manipulate them. They twist their arm and bend them and thinking that this person is my father. Have y'all ever heard that? My father in the ministry. (laughs) So the spirit of rejection will cause you to have a lifelong search for a father figure and it will cause you to reject are people who mean you good because they're telling you the truth about yourself and it causes you to be drawn to people that don't mean you any good and they're not trying to help you one bit whatsoever at all. Right. They're just using you and trying to manipulate you and play on your hurt and on your pain. Wow. And we need to know what our identity is as the children of Israel. Yes. And that's why we talk about who you are. Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Different types of rejection. Another kind of rejection is there is a true rejection, but there's also an imaginary rejection. This imaginary rejection uh, rejection offers often works through your imagination. In your mind, you feel like you're being rejected. But it's not a true rejection, but you just feel that in your mind. And what happens is, as those thoughts of rejection continue on building up in your mind, the spirit of rejection comes on in. And the spirit of rejection begins to twist your perception of circumstances so it looks and feels like you are being rejected even when you are not. You've been rejected so long by people to now you have opened up your heart and your mind and your soul to the spirit of rejection. And it has now twisted your thought, your mind, your perception, everything somebody is really doing something to. Y'all know somebody like that? It's never can be this person is genuine and this person really want to help you. It's always, but what did they mean when they said this? What did they mean when they looked at me like this? A lot of times you can get that death just through text message to somebody. You're reading the text, right. and then you, oh, they try to say, oh, yeah. I, get my keyboard. I, I'm going to text them back. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Take that! <laughs> and then the person read what you said, mm-hmm. and they say, how did they come up with that? <laughs> But because the spirit is gone, yeah. now that it came at you a certain way, right. now you feel in a certain way. Right. So <laughs> what you gonna do? Get my... no, that's what bam, bam! Okay. Pick up the phone. 
Right? Yeah. Now y'all texting all day back and forth. And, and the conversation is building and building and building. To now your feelings, your mind, everything is involved. Instead of somebody picking up the phone and saying, let's stop. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's talk about yeah. what you said at first. I, see, a lot of times we spend so much time mm -hmm. reacting mm -hmm. where we don't spend time enough being proactive. We stay reactive in that reacting mode. Just, I'm reacting to what you're doing. I'm reacting to what you're saying. And we never are proactive. Bible says a man that cannot control his spirit is like a city without walls broken down. It's ruthless. The walls are for your protection. But because you can't control your spirit, you like a city without walls, without borders, without anything. You no protection whatsoever at all. So whatever comes to your mind, whatever feeling you feel from the thought that comes to your mind, you rolling with that. Now the spirit of projection, rejection has now come in and it's twisting your perceptions of circumstances so it looks and feels like you are being rejected even when you're not. And the natural is called misunderstanding. Yes, sir. Come on. Anybody been misunderstood? Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, I'm just misunder. I'm the most misunderstood <laughs> person ever. Mm -hmm. Everything I say is always something that somebody can twist to make it into something negative. All right. I'm just being misunderstood by everybody. Nobody knows the trouble I've been through. Right? Makes you want to sing the blues, right? But if you don't cast down the imaginations that ride on the back of misunderstanding, the spirit of rejection will work to form a stronghold in your mind that controls your thought pattern and makes it easy for this demon to hold you in bondage. Yes. Because now it's no longer just rejection. You have now invited the spirit of rejection to come on in. Yeah. Because you never dealt with the hurt and the pain right. of what has happened. You never dealt with the misunderstanding. And even coming in here today, there's about four or five of y'all in this room right now that's been a misunderstanding. Yes. As of as recently of, as of this moment. That's true. Y'all hear it? Yes. And instead of working it out, you hold a grudge. And allow that spirit to keep on working on you. Yeah. And it's going to keep on holding you in bondage. Y'all hear that? Yeah. yeah. When a person, now we're dealing with self-rejection. The spirit of rejection is so in you where it got a stronghold on you. Now you're into self-rejection. When a person has suffered the wound of rejection, he or she begins to reject themselves. Wow. That may question themselves. What is it all about me that repels people? What's, what is it about me? Why ain't I ain't got no friends? Why don't nobody want to come and talk to me? Why don't nobody want to have fellowship with me? What is it about me that repels everybody? See, start getting into self-rejection. Must be something I'm saying. Must be something I'm doing. Probably what I got on. They begin to think that if they were different or even someone else, they would be loved and accepted. Everybody say self-rejection. Self-rejection. When you start rejecting yourself, you start saying, man, I ain't smart enough to do this. I'm not bright enough. I don't think I, I'm intelligent to. You start rejecting yourself. And you start speaking and you hear it in your mind and in your, in your heart. You're hearing words that are negative towards you. Has anybody ever heard a word negative in your mind about yourself? Oh, yeah. What do you do with that then? What, what do you do when you speak a negative about your own self in your own mind? What, what do you do with those kind of thoughts? Because those thoughts are going to continue to grow if you don't do something about it. If you don't stop them.
If they start to believe this, they start to seek to change their personality. If you start listening and believing the voices in your mind that's talking negative against your own self, mm -hmm. then you start to seek to change your personality. Whoa. They will want to copy someone whom they observed as being loved by others. All of a sudden, they want to be somebody else. When we seek to imitate others, we are not being our true selves. A lot of this happens in the puberty time. People are transitioning from 11 to 15, 11 to 18, sometime in that little, in that little time of life. You seem like you're being rejected by your peers. They're calling you weird, calling you odd, calling you strange. Then you look over and see, well, if they popular over there, maybe I need to be like them. Maybe I need to act like they act. So now you see boys that used to wear their pants up, now they're wearing their pants down. They sad. They want, they want the, the life of, of, of the rap life, looking at the raps and all that kind of stuff, getting their image and their identity from that, opposed to getting their true identity from the word of Yah. So now they're changing their image and changing who they truly are because they are rejecting them all, their own self. They reject. It's self-rejection. Mm. That's wrong. That's wrong. They're imitating the seek and they're imitating others, and they're not wanting to be their true self because their true self always get rejected. Mm. Y'all hearing that? Yeah. When we reject the self that Yah has created, when we reject our own self, we open up ourselves to form an alternate personality, which will be a false self and a demonically inspired you. You refuse to be who Yah created you to be, and you have accepted to be some. That's what Israel did. Israel wanted to be just like all the other nations. They said, told Samuel, give us a king. So we can be like all the other nations, not realizing that Yahweh was their king. So I guess Israelites had self-rejection. Yes, they did. Why we got all this law, statutes, judgments. Them folks over there can do whatever they want to do. We want to be like them. We, that's when we think the grass is greener. Come on, on the other side. When we look at some, everything that glitters ain't gold. Come on now, talk to me here. Yes, that's true. We looking on the other side of the fence and say, man, if I could be like them, because you already are rejecting yourself. Self-rejection is the door through which the characteristics, multiple personalities of schizophrenia are enabled to enter. Wow. That's where it comes from. Self reject. You don't like yourself. You don't like your weight. You don't like the way you look. So you become somebody else. You're just going to be somebody else that the Father ain't made you to be. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Rejection from the womb. This is a deep rejection that can begin before birth by rejection from the womb. Somebody who had an unwanted pregnancy. Because of illegitimacy, economic hardships, or marital upset marks the infant with rejection. Before the baby, can, infant can come into the world, you've already rejected it. Yes. And it feels the rejection while it's in you, inside the, the, the mother's right. womb. That's true. Y'all hear me next? Yes. Been rejected from the womb. Your deliverance must produce at least two things. First, a deepening love for Yah in every aspect of your life. If you're going to be delivered from self-rejection, the first thing you got to do is deepen your love for Yah in every aspect of your life. And then secondly, you must begin to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You got to start loving yourself. 
Are y'all hearing that? Yes. You got to love y'all, and then you got to begin to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I got to love y'all. I got to love y'all. With all my heart. With all my, with all my mind. With all my, with all my strength. With all my strength. And I got to love myself. And I got to love myself. See, when you love yourself, you ain't going to treat your neighbor any kind of way because you love yourself. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, what does it say? If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, Come on. but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. If I can speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I ain't got no love in my heart, I ain't nothing but a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. In other words, this is what you sound like. You sound just like this. This is how you are. That's your life. When you don't have love, that's what you become. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Come on. If I have the gift of prophecy, and I know all mysteries, and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I have nothing. When you don't have love, then you're nothing. You hear that? Yes. Come on, what does it say? And if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but if not love, it profits me nothing. In other words, you can do all these noble things and things that are worthy to in the front of people to be something, but if you're doing it from the wrong perspective and there's no love there, then he said those things really don't matter. Because you gotta do it with love. Yes. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Come on. Let's find out what love does. Love suffers long. Love suffering long. How long you been married, mother? Uh, 25 years. Has every day been a good day? No. You had some ups and you had some downs, right? Yes. Almost level to the ground. Yes. Right? So love suffering long. No. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. How long you been alive, mama? Yeah. 73. 73 years. Have every part of your life been just the blessed part? Every every day of your life been just the greatest? You've had some ups and downs? Ups and downs. So love suffering long. Yes, it Come on. Love envieth not. Love is kind. Everybody say love is kind. Love is kind. So love suffering long. And love is actually kind. It's not smart mouth. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to give a quick answer. That's right. But love is actually kind. <clears throat> ain't, ain't, ain't that a, good, a, a, new, a new thought? Love is actually yeah. kind. Yeah. Come on. Love envieth not. Love envieth not. Come on. Love von Vaunted. Vaunted not itself. Love don't try to lift itself up over everybody. Mm -hmm. Come on. It is it's not puffed up. It is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. Come on. Seek is not its own. It doesn't seek its own. Come on. It's not provoked. It's not provoked. Come on. Take it not account of evil. It take it not account of evil. Oh, you did that to me, so I got to do something to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Or oh, you think somebody did something to you, and you say, I'm going to do something to you because I think you did something to me. Yeah. Have anybody heard that before, Doug? Yes. Yes. Somebody think you did something to them, yeah. but you ain't did nothing to them. Right. But just because they think you did something, guess what? They're going to, boy, they say, well, I got you now. Yeah. Because they think it. And again, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. So if they're doing wrong to you, that's wrong thinking. Yes. Especially if you ain't did nothing. Y'all hearing it? Yes. Come on. Rejoice not in the unrighteousness. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Come on. But rejoiceth with the truth. But love rejoiceth with the truth. Hallelujah. Come on. Bear all things. Love bearing all things. 
things. Come on. Believe all it things. believes all things. Hope of all things. It hopes all things. Endure all things. And it endureth all things. So I don't know what you're going through, but when you have love, you're going to endure everything. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Love never fails. Love never, everybody say love never fails. Love, love never, never fails. fails. Love will never fail. Come on. But where, whether there be prophecies, they should be done away. So you can be prophesied until you blew in the face. All that stuff obviously is going to fall, fall, fall away and perish. Go, it's going to go away. Come on. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Tongues is going to cease. Come on. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be done away. Even if you have all the knowledge, Lord, as smart as you're going to be, your knowledge one day is going to be done away with. Right. Come on. For we, know, for we know in part. For we know in part. Come on. And we prophesy in part. And we prophesy in part. Come on. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. In other words, we're going to see the whole picture one day. Right. The parts are going to be removed, and we're going to see the whole picture one day. We ain't going to be prophesying in parts. Come on. When I was a child, I speak as a child. See, when you're a child, you can't see everything, can you? You can't see the bigger picture. But as you begin to develop and grow up, you begin to learn other things and other concepts. You go, like, oh, okay, now I, oh, I understand this. And then you go through adolescence, you go through young adulthood, and you start, wow, well, I'm starting to see. Mother, don't you see things differently, differently. than when you was in your yes. teenage years and your yes. 20s and 30s? Been living a long time. Yes. Hallelujah. So when you was a child, you spake and you spoke to people in a very childish way. And people are not only childish in the natural, but people are childish in the spirit. Yeah. And you can tell by the way they speak it. Yes. They ain't grew up yet. Mm -hmm. When you were a child, spiritually, you speak as children. Come on. You think I, as children. I felt as a child. Uh -huh. You I, feel I, as a child. You, I thought as a child. You thought as a child. Y'all see that? Your thinking and your feeling. You feel as a child and you think as a child. You think as a child and you feel. Right. Come on. Now that I become a man. Now that I become a man, I become, you know, older, right. wiser, get some knowledge and some understanding about some things. Come on. I have put away childish things. I have put away childish things. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Come on. For now, we see in a mirror darkly. We see in a mirror darkly. We're trying to gauge where we are, but we can't, it's, we're looking through a mirror, and it's dark. We can't see our full who we are, because we're looking dark. See, we don't know what you're going to be. We don't know what the seed of the word is going to do in a heart and a mind that it begins to grow up in and grow up. Are y'all hearing this? Grow up in. Yes. See, a seed, matter of fact, when you look at a when you look at a watermelon seed, anybody saw a watermelon seed in there? Yeah. Does that seed look like the watermelon that's in your hand? No, no. no. When you when you take a, a seed from corn and look at that seed of corn, does it look like a corn? No. Stalk? Okay. Well, that's the same way it is. We don't know when, when this word begins to be matured in you, what you truly gonna be. Right. Because the seeds are going in. But when those seeds begin to mature, those seeds are going to begin to become what that seed of the word that was sown is going to begin to produce after its own kind. Yes. Hallelujah. So for we see the mirror darkly, come on. But then face to face. But then face to face. Now I know in part. Now I know in part. But then shall I know fully, even as also I was fully known. So one day we're going to know fully everything we need to know. Hallelujah. When we begin to grow up a little, begin to understand at the age of maturity. Come on. But now abide in faith, hope, love. But now abide in faith, hope, and love. Come on. These three. These three. The greatest of these is love. And the greatest of those three, faith, hope, and love, is love. Hallelujah. Somebody shout love. Love. Hallelujah. A wounded spirit, broken heart. Malicious words cause unbearable wounds. Yes, it does. 
Rejection operates in the spirit realm, but also creates physical problems. Proverbs 12 and 25, what does it say? <clears throat> Heaviness in the heart of a man make it stoop, but a good word make it glad. Wounds of rejection and a broken heart can produce depression, which alters the continents and adversely affects the spiritual area of life. When you have a broken heart, a broken spirit, man, your countenance is just changed. We can see the brokenness on your countenance, on yes, your face. That's true. Proverbs 17 and 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. That's what a broken spirit do. It dries up your bone, make you be depressed, make you not want to get out of the bed before. I remember a story, and this is a true story. I remember um, being at a church, and I was leading that church, and, and uh, um, a repentance, and Leading them, I just got through preaching through through deliverance, man. I was at the altar, man, and people looked like they was getting breakthrough, and man, well, I felt the, the anointing, the power of Yah come on me. And people are getting healed, delivered, and set free. And then uh, after all that was done and said, the, the person who was my leader tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Man, all that wasn't necessary. Oh, <laughs> man, man, you could. We got next week for that." And the week after next, and the week after, you ain't got to do all of that all the time. Just get a word and sit down. Wow. Guess what happened to me when I went home? The spirit of depression came. I said, oh, I messed up. I wasn't supposed to get folks delivered and healed and set free. Wow. And I felt like I did something wrong. I was just supposed to preach and just let the people go, even though I could clearly see these people needed deliverance, they needed lots of prayer, they needed help, and I wanted to do that. But in my youth, mm -hmm. I was told by somebody older than me right. to literally stop all of that right. because we got next week. Wow. Ain't that something? Y'all even know next week don't have a come. Don't even know, but I tell you what that did to me. It dried my spirit up right. to the bone. Okay. And I put the covers over my face. <laughs> Because that word was so sharp. sharp. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Sister Tahir, Sister John, oh. speaking to me, said, mm -hmm. you ain't did nothing wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that sister, <laughs> she <laughs> lived, I don't even think she <laughs> knows how deep in depression I, I felt it coming in on me. I'm like, what is this? This is, this is like, man, this is depressed. I didn't want to lift. Right. I didn't want to put the covers over me just because of that word. And it was said in front of everybody. Right. I was like, oh, man, I felt so sad. But she said, you ain't did nothing wrong. No, you did something that was right. And she encouraged me. And she got my face from uh, underneath them covers. And I said, well, hallelujah, you right, honey. You right. I did do something right. When is healing and deliverance in order? Is it, is it only in order sometime? Or is healing and deliverance in order all the time? Hallelujah. So, boy, I, I shook the pressure off of me, but I felt it coming in, mm -hmm. coming on me real strong. Mm -hmm. But I, but it was it was lifted off of me. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for Sister Tehillah mm -hmm. speaking to me those words because it encouraged me. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 18 and 8, what did it say? The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost part of the belly. Anybody been lying on before? I mean, lied on like something you like. Oh. Wow. Yes. That's a good one there. Yeah. Man. What a story that joke. Wow. But at the same time, it wounded and it went down to the inner parts of your belly. Yeah, Boy, you was upset, wasn't you? Yeah. Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, what it say? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And three, four cord is not quickly broken. Three, four cord is not easily broken. What this is about to show you is that you can get so far into rejection and with the spirit of rejection and the self-rejection that that spirit begins to bring some other people, other spirits rather, to make that thing or make that, 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 that hold on your mind and your heart stronger. Everybody say the triple threat. 
So the spirit of rejection went to go get the root of bitterness. <laughs> Whoa. Now you got the root of bitterness, the fear of rejection, and self-rejection all at one time trying to hold you down because a three-four chord is not easily broken. These are powerful spirits, powerful spirits that totally warp and destroy the personality of the person. The root of bitterness, the fear of rejection. Y'all see these roots? Yes. That's what Satan wants to desire to have in your heart, the root of bitterness, where you just bitter. You can't let it go. You keep talking about it. It's been three years and you're still talking about the same thing. Yeah. It's been ten years and you're talking about the same thing. What has happened is there has been a root of bitterness that has set up in you where you can't even let that thing go. They hurt you so bad and did you so wrong and to you put it, there's a root of bitterness. And that root of bitterness has to be rooted out of you. Yeah, that's bad. The root of bitterness, the roots are always hidden. They are not in plain view. You can't see them, but you can see the fruit of them. You can see the sin manifesting in your life. And that's how we know there's a root down on the inside of you. A root of bitterness. We looking at what you're doing. But you think nobody can see what you're doing. But some people got discerning spirits. Mm -hmm. That's a gift to be able to discern spirits. Y'all hearing this? Yes. Yes. Hebrews 12 and 1, what it says? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the same which thou doeth so easily beseech us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So this is letting you know we have been encompassed with a whole with a great cloud of witnesses. And it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Let us run this race with patience. Because we're all in a race of life. We're in a journey. And we've gone through this journey. And we have to walk through this life and this journey with some patience. We fall down, but we get up, don't we? Yes. Well, the righteous man falleth seven times and get back up. And it's something else. People will love to point their finger when they see you on the floor, on, on the, uh, 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 you know, die. They, they love to point their finger when they think the Father has cut you down. But they hate to rejoice when they see you rising back up to the top. Because a righteous man falleth seven times, but he keeps getting back up. That's right. Why? Because the buoyancy of Yahweh's word, just like a tree got buoyancy, every, I don't care how much water, that log and that tree is going to keep on doing what? Rising to the top. And that's how the buoyancy of Yahweh's word has to be in you. When no matter how low or far, far you've been pushed down in life, the buoyancy of Yahweh's truth keeps bringing you back up to the top. Hallelujah. Yes. Keep on rising. Yes. The fruit, the leaves, the trunk, and the limbs of a tree are obvious, but the roots are way down here under the ground. Yes. You can't see the roots. We can't see what's... Ain't there a lot of roots down there? Yes, a lot. You can't see the roots. You can just see the fruit. You shall know them by their fruits. That's how you're going to know who are truly the servants of Yah. You're going to know them by their fruits. This is what the spirit of rejection produces. It produces phonies. It produces people being people pleasers. It produces an unassertiveness. The fruit of the spirit of rejection, it produces passive and aggressive people. The spirit of the spirit of rejection, it produces an inability to trust Yah. The fruit of the spirit of rejection, 
It produces excessive shyness. Y'all ever saw somebody that's just excessively shy? You're like, come on and talk. Come on, come on and talk. And they just excessively shy. The fruit of self-rejection produces difficulty loving others. The fruit of self-rejection uh, uh, produces self-criticism. Y'all ever know somebody, or maybe you've done it yourself, just be criticizing yourself? Man, I could have did that. Look. Man, I, man, I wish I could have. Man, I should have. No. Self-criticizing. Just criticizing yourself all the time. Mm -hmm. Fruit of the spirit of rejection, wishful comparison with others. You compare yourself with somebody else. Over attention on clothes. You got to over attention on how you look. You got to have a certain look about yourself. Got to have the main brands on. You got to have all your colors coordinated. Mm -hmm. Spirit of self rejection, it produces floating bitterness. Mm -hmm. It produces an attitude of perfectional, trying to just perfect and be imperfect in every which way. And it's healthy to want to be excellent in the things you do. But when you are a person who spends the rest of your life trying to be perfect, have everything, what they call it, on fleek, <laughs> have everything on point, and then you put your nose down on everybody else that ain't on point, then you got a problem. Yeah. It produces an attitude of superiority. I'm better than you. Okay. We're talking about the fruit of rejection. Or the spirit of rejection. An attitude of superior, I'm better than you. It produces an awkward attempt to hide unchangeable defects. Your hair is your hair. Right. And I don't care what kind of hair weave or whatever you put in that. Your hair, roots, is your hair roots. That's it. Y'all hearing it? Hallelujah. Awkward attempts to try to hide unchangeable defects. You try to hide defects that you believe is a defect. Y'all remember that uh that uh, uh thing Chris Rock did talking about good hair, bad hair, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he brought that that hair to the Chinese folks, and they was like, "Don't nobody want to buy that hair." <laughs> <laughs> they, they kicked the bad, the, what they would call the bad hair. They kicked that to the side and said, "No, everybody wants long straight hair, long straight hair." Now they selling what they would call big, a uh, bad hair all over the place now. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Molly. See? It's got all kinds of names to it. The spirit of self-rejection produces extravagance. It produces wrong priorities. And we need to ask Yahweh to probe the inner depths of our hearts and souls to reveal hindering things which block or hinder Yahweh's will for our life. What the book say in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is what? Good, acceptable, and perfect will of Yah. That's what we want. Everybody say, I want to be in the perfect will of Yah, but then at the same time, we don't know what the perfect will of Yah is because we're not testing it. Facing these things squarely and appropriating forgiveness for them has a heavy effect in determining our spiritual progress. Mm -hmm. Psalms 44, 21, I'm finished. Closing with this. Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Come on, Lamentations. 3 and 14. Let us search and try our ways. Turn again to the Lord. Let us search and try our way and turn again to Yah. Let's close out with freedom from rejection. If you're taking notes, we give you five things on how you can get free from rejection. Y'all ready to close out? Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to close out with this. Number one, we got to ask Yahweh to show us or show when rejection or the spirit of rejection has came into our life. We have to ask the Father, Father, when did this spirit of rejection come in our life? When did, when did, what was the door that was open that
that this spirit of rejection has come into my life? Was it before I was born? Did my mother or father, did they want me? You got to ask the father to reveal. When did this spirit of rejection or me being rejected, when did it come into my life? That's number one, to get in freedom from rejection. Once you begin to identify, going back over your life, when this spirit or when the, you was rejected and how you begin to analyze how you felt when you was rejected, then you begin to ask Yahweh to come beside you in your rejection so that you can be healed. Yeah. You got to ask the Father, Father, heal me from that rejection. I remember being rejected in third grade when I wrote that note to that girl and said, will you be my girlfriend? Y-E-S spells yes and N-O spells no. <laughs> Circle one of them, please. And then she put no! <laughs> oh. So you got the note back and was like, <laughs> nobody likes me. So now you got to go back to that point and say, y'all, thank you for identifying that in my life. I forgot about that. Yeah. Father, can you heal me from that rejection right there? She didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> she didn't really mean it at all, right? <laughs> Heal me, Father, from being rejected. Y'all right. hearing this? That's right. Second, third thing, you have to declare your forgiveness to those who have rejected you. Father, I forgive all of those that rejected me down through the years. Even that girl in third grade, I forgive her. Wherever she is in life. I forgive. Y'all hearing this? That's right. Can you identify who rejected when your rejection, the spirit of rejection, or when you were rejected? Can you identify when that came in? Hmm? You gotta ask the Father. And then ask him to come beside you and to heal you. And begin to declare your forgiveness to those who have rejected you. The fourth thing, you must take your spiritual authority in Yeshua to command the spirit of rejection to leave. Everybody say in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of rejection. Leave me now. Leave me now. You got to do that. You got to command it to leave. And some people may be saying, you may hit a thought in your mind. You ain't got no spirit of rejection. You okay. Don't say that again. Because if you say it a couple more times, what well, a spirit will come out. Hallelujah. So you got to command that spirit. And this is being honest with yourself. Yes. Got to be honest with yourself. And finally, you got to remember that Yahweh loves us and he has called us and has given us an identity as his people, Yisrael. We are the royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people that show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So freedom from rejection, we're going to ask Yahweh to show us back over our lives when that spirit or when we were rejected came in. We're going to ask number two, Yahweh to come beside us so that he can begin to heal us from being rejected. Thirdly, we're going to declare forgiveness to those who have rejected us. Fourthly, we're going to take the spiritual authority we have in the name of Yahshua to command the spirit of rejection to leave. And the fifth thing, we're going to remember that Yahweh loves us and he has called us and given us an identity as his people Israel. In other words, we can identify with his people because we are the people that he's called out of darkness into his marvelous life. Shabbat shalom, saints. Shabbat shalom. How many people got something out of that? Overcoming rejection. Y'all got something out of that? Hallelujah. Come on. Abba Yahweh, let's stand up. Abba Yahweh, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for allowing us an opportunity to walk.